Hello! Uh, I am here to tell you that you have been robbed, uh, or at least, you know, in a minor way. Uh, so, if you're a, a, a pile of dust like I am, born in the late 80s, learned to use a computer in the 90s, uh, then something that you are very familiar with using a computer is something called a file path or a folder structure. Uh, but however, if you grew up using a computer either in the form of a phone uh, or let's say a tablet or even Google Docs, then this is something that has been hidden from you in large part, uh, which is, you know, fine for most of the population. They get along just fine. But if you're going to use a computer to, you know, do classwork or create things or do work, then you're probably going to want to know about file paths and folder structure. And that's what this video is all about. Uh, so, you know, a file that's on your computer, on your machine, is different than a file that is on the internet. You know, if you're on Google Docs and you want to send somebody else the word, the, the document that you're working on, what do you do? You click on it, you find the link, you send somebody the link, and then suddenly they have access to that file, right? That's what's called a URL. Uh, that is a universal resource locator that somebody can use to find your document on the internet. However, if something's on your computer, it's not on the internet, it's on your computer. Right? So there's something else, uh, and that's going to be a file path. And that's going to be something that your computer uses to find documents on your computer. Uh, and that's not going to be something that somebody else is going to be able to immediately access. A file path is all about using documents on your own computer as opposed to trying to send them to somebody else. If you want to send them to somebody else, you got to like upload it to something like Google Drive uh, or Dropbox or OneDrive or whatever, right? Uh, or you send it as an email attachment. We're talking about file paths that are on your computer themselves. If you want to upload a document, you know, to your course website or something like that, you can't just send them the file path because that's all about what's on your computer. You have to actually upload the document as an attachment or something like that. So let's talk about file paths. Uh, so a file path is how the, the, the folders are structured on your computer, right? Your computer is structured according, sort of like a desk drawer, right? You open a desk drawer, inside of that desk drawer is a bunch of folders, inside those folders are a bunch of documents. If you have something like a file drawer, I mean, at least you know what a file drawer is, I assume. Uh, and it's sort of like that, right? That's sort of the metaphor that was used to create this stuff in the first place. And this applies across all operating systems. It doesn't matter whether you have a Mac or a Windows or even a Linux or whatever, they all use this same sort of structure. So let's talk about how to access files on your computer uh, when you are, let's say, using code or something like that, using text to access these documents. Uh, so first of all, how do we create a folder? How do we create a good structure for our files to sit in, which we're going to need to do if we are working on our own computer? So first of all, here's my here's my documents folder on Windows, right? Again, this is going to be the, pretty much the same thing on Mac or whatever. Uh, let's say I'm going to create a new project to work on. Let's say I'm going to work on a term paper or something like that. Well, what I'm going to do is first I'm going to right click or command click on Win on Mac. I'm going to go new folder. And now I'm going to create my project as a folder. And I can now store all of my files related to this project inside of this folder. And it's a good idea to have some sort of general folder structure, a standard folder structure that people can understand. You know, maybe I'm working with some data. You know, maybe I'll have a data folder inside of here to store all of my data in. Uh, maybe I'm working with some code. I'll have a code folder for all of that stuff. Depending on the language that you're working on, there's often a standard set of folder structures to work with. You know, if you're in Python, you can use Cookie Cutter. Uh, if you're in R, you can use the R Studio Project Manager. They'll all create sort of standard folder structures for you. Uh, so we've got these folders. They're just buckets to put our files in, and then little buckets inside of the big buckets that we can put our files in, and that's pretty good. Now, we've got these buckets. How can we use them? Uh, so let's say that we're going to create some data here. I'm, I'm just going to make a fake little file right here. I'm going to make a new, uh, I don't know, text document, mydata.csv. Maybe it's a CSV file right there. Okay, so uh, this is a file that's on my computer, uh, and I want to access it in some way, maybe from the code that I'm working on. I can load this data in with my code, and I can do some you know pr nice programming stuff to it. Uh, how can I tell the computer where to find this file? Just like I might send my friend a link to Google Images to where an Im I, image that I found is, uh, I need to send, tell my computer where the link to this file is on my computer. Uh, so I need to tell it the, f the folders that it's inside of and then the name of the file inside those folders. So uh, one thing I can do, at least on Windows uh, and similarly on Mac, if I click up here on this little Explorer tab, it will show me the folder structure. Now, what do we see here? We see a couple of things. So first of all, see the C colon, 
And then we have a backslash and then users and Huntington Klein, that's my name, uh, OneDrive documents, my project data, etc. right? What's going on here? So there's a couple things. One, there's this C colon, that is what's called the drive. It's the, the part of the hard drive, the actual data storage that is storing all these folders in it. And then I got a bunch of folders in here, right? I got a users folder, inside of that users folder is an N Huntington client folder, inside of that folder is a OneDrive folder, inside of that folder is a documents folder, inside of that folder is a my project folder, inside of that folder is a data folder, and inside of that folder is my file, right? This right here is all of the folders that are in the file path. If I wanna tell my computer where to find that file, I need to give it that whole list of folders so that it knows where to look. Right. Now, one thing to note here, this is one of the only things in this video that's going to matter which operating system you're using. Windows uses these little backslashes here, C colon backslash, users backslash and then going to climb backslash and so on. Everything else in the world, your web, your web browser, Macintoshes, uh, Linux, they all use forward slashes. Windows is the only one that uses backslashes. Uh, so something to keep in mind is that if you're working on something other than Windows, it's going to look like this instead with a forward slash all the way down. Now Windows will generally also accept forward slashes. So if you're typing something in and you use forward slashes, you should be okay. But if you get backslashes and you wanna use it somewhere else, like if you wanna send it to somebody who's using a Mac, then you might need to replace it with some forward slashes. Keep that in mind. Okay, so I've got all these folders here. Inside of it, I've got my file. So if I want to have, the, what is the file path going to be for this file right here, mydata.csv? Well, I'm going to take these, fo this, these folders right here. Let me just put it into a little do uh, uh, document here. And I'll put slash mydata.csv. Just like I'm going to a website, right? Except it's on my computer instead of on a website. That's what the file path is for that particular document. All right. So far, so good. I've got basically the URL to my file, the file path. Uh, all written up right here. It knows where to find this document. Okay, so great. What can we do with that? Well, first of all, there's two different kinds of file paths. One is called the absolute file path, and this is what we're seeing right here, right? It tells the computer from any location on this computer how it can find this file path. And it starts with the drive usually. On Windows, it's going to look something like C. Maybe on some other system, it might look like file colon slash slash, something like that. But um, uh, what this is saying is that this is the absolute file path, so from anywhere on this system, I can tell you where to find this file. Uh, there's also something called the relative file path, which is starting from a given folder, how can I find this file? Well, from anywhere on this computer, I can tell you where to find this file. That's the absolute file path right here, right? C, colon, users, etc., etc. I can go all the way down this list until I find the file. But let's say I'm just hanging out in my documents folder. Well, how do I find my mydata.csv file? Well, I don't have to do all that business, right? I can just go, oh, well, I know it's inside of my project and from here, and then from there it's inside of data, and then it's the mydata.csv, right? That's a relative file path. Starting from somewhere, where is my file, right? That's a relative file path. And so if I knew that I was starting in documents, then I wouldn't need all this business, right? That, that's redundant. I'm already there. I already know where I am. I just need this part, right? So that first, that whole thing is the absolute file path. This is the relative file path right there, right? That tells me starting from a given folder, where can I find this file? Great, so we have an absolute file path that tells us where we start, where we can find the file anywhere on our system. We have a relative file path that says starting from a given folder, where can I find this file? Now, why would I wanna do that? Well, there's a couple reasons. One important one we're gonna get to when you send somebody else your code, you're not gonna send them your whole computer, right? So the idea that you're gonna look through the whole computer to find your file, not a good one. But you might send them like your project folder. And then they would say, well, you know, I don't know where to look on your entire computer because you know, on my computer, I don't have an N Huntington Klein folder because my name is not N Huntington Klein, right? Uh, but I do have your my project folder because you sent me your my project folder. And inside of that folder, there is a data folder. And inside of that folder, there's my data.csv. So now I can find your thing. So if you're sending code to somebody else, you're pretty much always going to want to use those relative file paths because their whole structure on their computer is not going to match your absolute structure, but the relative structure might just match. You can send them your folder. You should be good to go. All right. 
That's the basics of working with file paths overall. Let's take it one step further and talk about how file paths might show up in code that you might use if you're programming, uh, let's say for a class or you're working in a group or something like that, right? You're gonna be writing some code that's gonna be using some files that are on your computer uh, and you're gonna want to be working with that code. You're gonna be working with those files. How can we do that? Now I'm gonna do this in the R programming language, but I'm gonna be very stressed this. It does not matter which language you use. All this stuff is gonna be the same, okay? So I'm gonna open up R, couple things. First thing, for the exact same reason that I mentioned before, if you're gonna send somebody else your files or whatever, you wanna use the relative file paths. Same thing here, in your code, you pretty much never wanna use the absolute file paths because if you send somebody else your code, they're not gonna have the same folder structure that you do. And so if they try to run your code, it's not gonna work on their computer unless you use relative file paths. So that's a good idea to do. So. I'm gonna load in some data here. Again, this I'm gonna write some R code. This will work in any language, uh, the file path's part of it anyway. So I'm gonna, you know, library data table. I'm gonna read in, you know, mydata.csv, right? The important part here is that this is the file path right here. So this is assuming that the mydata.csv is in the folder that I am currently looking at. Remember the relative file path in, whatever folder you're starting in, it's gonna look for that. So this is looking for mydata.csv in the folder that I'm in. This is something called a working directory. Code is generally run from something called a working directory. It picks a folder to start from, and then everything is relative to that, right? Every, all the file paths are taken relative to that working directory. So in this case, let's say that we were to make this working directory the my project directory. Well, in that case, I shouldn't be doing mydata.csv because that's not in here, right? Mydata.csv is inside of the data folder and then that's where it is. So instead of mydata.csv, I should say data slash mydata.csv and it will know, right? Whatever your working directory is, if that's the my project folder, I'm gonna look inside the data folder inside of that. And then there, I'm gonna look for mydata.csv and that's where I'm gonna find the file. Now, how do you know what your working directory is? Well, this is this is gonna change from language to language. Uh, you can usually set your working directory in some way. Most languages will have a command for setting your working directory. Uh, it, if you're using a project manager of some sort, it will also, we will generally have a way of setting your working directory as well. I'm not gonna get into the specifics of that. Uh, look into your language specific things about how to set a working directory. If you Google how to set a working directory in your language, you'll find something, I promise you. Once you have your working directory, you're gonna know how to access the files that you need. Pretty much all the files you're gonna need are gonna be in subdirectories of your working directory. And if they're not, you should probably restructure your project. Uh, and then you know where to find them. They're in the data folder in your directory that you're working in for your project, or they're in the code folder or whatever, right? Whatever you need to access, it's gonna be in there somewhere. Uh, and that's gonna be covering pretty much all the things that you need to know. So once you've set your working directory, you know how to access all the files that you need. Uh, the only th other thing to think about really at this point is how you can sort of move between these different kinds of folders. And it turns out that the, fo the file paths actually have some hidden little code in there for how you can navigate between folders. So let's say, for example, that your working directory is not my project, but instead, for some reason, your working directory is the code folder in my project. Well, let's say I want to load that data, but the data is not in the code folder. It's not in a data subfolder of the code folder. It's in the data folder for which I need to go back to my project and then into data. And that's where the file is. Well, it's, there is a little uh, uh, part of the file path that allows you to go up a folder before going back down. And that is the dot dot. And that's it. So if my working path, if my working directory here was the code folder, I could use dot dot to go back up to my project. Remember that my project is the thing that has the code folder in it. So if I'm starting in code, dot dot brings me back up to my project and then data brings me back into data and then my data.csv helps me load the data file that I actually need. Now, of course, there are lots of things that I'm leaving out about using files, about file paths, you, you know, how to set permissions for your files or you know, different kinds of things you can't do. So for example, it's a pretty good idea to not include spaces in your file names because that can mess up a lot of different systems. Um, but uh, you know, it's in terms of the broad strokes, if you just need to turn in some files for your project, for your class, this is the stuff that you need to know. So to recap, 
A file path on your computer is like a URL on the internet, except it's telling your computer how to find a file on your computer, rather than telling somebody in the world how to find a file on the internet. Of course, because your computer is not available to everybody else, this file path will only work on your computer. You can't just send it to somebody else and have it work. Uh, the file path is generally structured with folders inside of folders inside of folders. In most systems, it's forward slashes separating the folders. On Windows, it will be backslashes. Um, but that's the idea. An absolute file path starts from the drive directory, C, C colon or D colon or whatever on Windows, similar things on Mac or Linux. Uh, relative file paths start from a working directory and work from there, either going forward uh, to smaller subdirectories in, with a forward slash or a backslash, or going up before going back down with dot dot. If you're going to produce code or share, share a project with somebody, A, you probably want to have a standard folder structure for your project that you can share with people. You know, a pretty standard thing, like with Cookie Cutter or an, a project manager might suggest for you with a data folder and a code folder and a results folder and all that sort of stuff. And importantly, the code that you share with other people should not include absolute file paths because their computer does not look like your computer. You want to make sure that it's starting from some sort of working directory because you can send them the folder that contains all the important stuff and that can be the working directory. You can't send them their, your, their, your whole computer. It's not going to work. All right, so that is the basics of how to use files, uh, a task and a skill that has been hidden from you by the progresses of technology that are probably a good idea for most people, but not a good idea for serious users like you. So uh, make sure that you use it properly, and hopefully you'll avoid any issues. Uh, it doesn't take that long to get used to it anyway. Thank you very much.